Good evening, culture lovers, oi oi, and welcome to Bushel on the Box, the show that does for TV romance what the M25 does for hedgehogs. I'm Gary Bushel, and this is our Valentine's Day special. Valentine's Day is named after the real Saint Valentine, who was beheaded back in the 3rd century AD, probably because he was caught overcharging for chocolates and roses. <laughs> Yes, love is in the air like Cat Slater's ankles. Love is wonderful. It's the most glorious fortnight of your life. But love on TV, now that's a different matter. Now, I don't want to turn into the Grinch here, but can we talk about One Day on Netflix? Female critics are drooling over this latest adaptation of the David Nicholson novel, also a 2011 film famous for Anne Hathaway's dismal attempt at a Leeds accent. It was right up there with Kevin Costa in Robin Hood's Prince of Thieves and Dick Van Dyke in Mary Poppins. Cupid's arrow flies when working class Emma meets charming posh boy Dexter on their graduation day at Edinburgh University. Half the female adulation for the show possibly stems from cool, good-looking decks falling for this average-looking, rather awkward and earnest woman. The hook is they miss getting off with one another every year for 14 years, until finally, eventually, they do. Thrilling. Do you know it's easier to believe in Nishin Cat Slate or EastEnders than these two? You'd find more chemistry in a laboratory vacuum. In this version, Emma changes ethnicity, presumably to give the unlikely couple a better shot of appearing in a TV advert. I've persevered into episode two, where she's in a radical fringe theatre group, having encounters with a drip in the back of their tour bus. Let's just say she enjoyed a finger buffet as opposed to a cocoa van. So far, it's duller than televised sewing. <laughs> Check at that, this is even worse. Charting the toxic romance between a married nice guy scientist who hasn't got the balls to tell his rich bitch ex to stay out of his life. She takes the piss out of him, bullies him, sneers at his job and deletes his texts. If the genders were reversed, this would never have got made. Ah, but stay with it, we're told, because she was abused as a child. That might explain her, but it doesn't excuse her actions. Everyone serving a life sentence has got somebody else to blame. Alice is a narcissistic nutter and any normal bloke would run a mile. The top five TV couples. One, David and Maddie on Moonlighting. Tim and Dawn on The Office. Ross and Demelza on Poldark. Smithy and Nessa, Gavin and Stacey. Claire and Jamie on Outlander. And the most realistic TV couple, a toss-up between Alfie and Else in Till Death Us Do Part, George and Mildred, and Jack and Vera Duckworth on Coronation Street. Most unlikely, Phil Mitchell and Dawn Swan. Or Ian Bill and anybody. <laughs> See, I like Lois and Clark, but how could the two of them ever have sex? The bloke has got super speed. Imagine the friction burns. Besides, men with super speed. What woman wants that? Superheroes can't shag humans. I mean, imagine if you were getting it on with Supergirl and she decided to pleasure you manually, like Lauren Bobet in the cinema last September, and she got over-enthusiastic. The woman can bend iron girders with her fingers. Imagine what she could do to your Hampton. She's got super breath too. If she blew in your ear at the height of passion, your head could end up in Gotham City. And imagine the PMT. That's a period drama no one needs. She wouldn't throw cups, she'd throw Chryslers. Poor old Superman. It's hard for him even to find a telephone box to change in these days. I've just seen a walking dead Valentine's card, yeah. Because nothing says true love like being stalked by brainless zombies who want to eat you alive. Violets are blue, roses are red. Sleeping with you is like shagging the dead. 33% of people think Valentine's Day is a con invented by chocolate makers and card manufacturers. The other 67% are women. Possibly just me, right? But my favourite romance was between Patrick Swayze's Dalton and Kelly Lynch's Doc in Roadhouse. 
Although God knows how he resisted Julie Michaels as Denise. Thanks to One Day for reminding us of things from the 1980s we no longer have, like cassette tapes, public payphones, letter writing, paper maps, and indoor smoking. Things I genuinely miss from those days. MTV when it played music, proper sitcoms, and football terraces you could stand in. Did you read about the Crocodile Tears the BBC Radio 2 boss shed for Steve Wright? Helen Thomas was right to say he was a brilliant broadcaster. But if she realised how gifted he was, why the hell did they sack him? We see this all the time on TV as well as radio. Clueless bosses get rid of popular favourites to replace them with younger faces in order to chase the elusive, younger, more diverse audiences they feel are gagging for change. But they never seem to come. We see it from Benny Hill to Mimic Mike Osmond. When a new exec kicked him out of Capital Gold, they lost a million listeners. Underappreciated Ken Bruce jumped ship before he was pushed, taking 1.3 million listeners with him. The BBC axed the great Les Dawson shortly before his death and ignored living gold like Spike Milligan and Charlie Drake for years. They axed Jim Davidson's generation game and never found anyone good enough to replace him. I was lucky enough to appear on Steve Wright's TV show and his radio show several times, and I saw his madcap, irreverent style in the roar. I still fondly remember the likes of Mr Angry, Barry from Watford, and Steve's pub singer character from years ago. Here's a fault for broadcasters. Don't ride roughshod over your audiences. Treasure the talent you've got, because they often turn out to be irreplaceable. You know what annoys me? These definitive lists of all-time greats that newspapers run, which are almost always wrong. The latest one claimed to be the 100 greatest films ever made, and A Long Good Friday didn't even make the list. Nor did First Blood, Goodfellas, or Die Hard. The Life of Brian and This Is Spinal Tap, two of the funniest movies ever made, didn't make the top 50. And don't get me started on the male's greatest ever TV list where there was no sign of the Sweeney and Minder was at 60 bloody two. See, I'm told that Bushel on the Box was number one in one TV list. Unfortunately, it was the list titled Shows Only a Lunatic Would Recommission. Cheers, Jim. Time for some mysteries. If you cross the vibrators with the pussycat dolls, would you get wet, wet, wet? If yoga teachers went on strike, would they put gym bosses in an impossible position? When cops retire, do they have a party or do they just go quietly? And finally, and seriously, what good would the MOD's diversity networks be if we ever got invaded? And there's just time for a classic goof. Jamie Oliver was slicing corn cobs with a large knife when he said, don't go in too deep, just go in shallow with the tip of your chopper. And on a serious Valentine's Day note, my thoughts go out to all those I have lost in the past. I should have known being a tour guide was not for me. Oi, oi, that's your lot. Tune in next time for my special guest, Nick Welsh. <laughs>